YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Every single week I drop a new video about film photography. So if that's your thing, definitely go ahead and subscribe. So I want to do this in front of every one of you. I want to hear publicly apologize to Kodak Ektar 100. I'm sorry for talking smack about you. It was me, not you. So if you all remember, I put out a video not too long ago, let's say two months ago, link above right here, about my experience shooting Ektar when I was out in the Lake District in the countryside of the UK. Yeah, I find myself asking this question, what is the purpose of this film? I know I mentioned a lot about landscape and I mentioned something about fine grain and that kind of thing. And that's definitely apparent here. This is definitely a good film for those purposes. But is it that much better that you wanna use this instead of Portra 160? I'm just not sure. I was talking all kinds of crazy, basically questioning the value of Ektar. But now I fully admit that I was wrong and most of you were right. Everything they say about Ektar when it comes to landscapes and beautiful kind of outdoor images is definitely true. The colors, the saturation, the sharpness, the fine grain, it is all there. My problem was I wasn't scanning these negatives properly and therefore I was getting very subpar results. Recently I've been working on fine tuning my scanning process and I think I finally have figured out how to do a process that works for me and gets me very consistent results. I scan with a mirrorless camera. I use a combination of Negative Lab Pro and Film Lab Desktop, depending on kind of how I'm feeling. And of course, I'm using the Essential Film Holder, which has given me really, really good, consistent results and really helps me scan my film very quickly. I have an affiliate link above here and I'll put it in the description box below as well, in case you're interested in purchasing one. Nonetheless, it's taken me roughly six months or so to really figure out how to best scan my negatives. And I can finally say I'm getting the results that I've been looking for. And that goes specifically for Ektar as well. I actually went back and rescanned a whole bunch of negatives from previous shoots, including that video that I mentioned earlier. And I love the images so much more now. And I think there's some tips and tricks and some kind of fine tunes to my workflow that have helped me eliminate any kind of issues that I might have and really give me positive looking results when it comes to how good Ektar looks. Ektar now honestly is, feels like some of my favorite film. I just love how bold and how kind of in your face the images are while still being very clean and beautiful. I was actually inspired to make this video after watching one of Hashem's videos. He runs Pushing Film and he basically showed his love for Ektar as well. And I thought, you know what? I really like Hector for the same exact reasons that he does. It just took me a little bit longer to realize that that was the case. So I hit him up and said, hey, let's chat. I wanna know what you think about Hector and I also wanna know what you think about scanning and how you've come to figure out what your process is and figure out some nice tips and tricks. So here's footage from our chat. I hope it's useful. Hey, what's going on, man? How's it going? Good, how are you, man? It's good to finally chat. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice of you to join. I really appreciate it. It's uh, it's a hectic day already. It's kind of midday here in, in London, yeah, and I think looks it looks like, like you're getting ready for bed or something. Well, kind of. It's nine eleven. I'm actually going to develop a quick roll of film before I go to sleep. You know how it is. I just want to get it done so it dries tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And then I'll sleep I, I, around eleven. Yeah. I, I figure you're, you're trying to keep yourself busy since you have so much time at home now because of the lockdown Trying. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, I was watching one of your recent videos where you were kind of showing appreciation for Ektar and it just made me kind of realize that I also have a really strong appreciation for Ektar. Um, I don't know if you saw, but I made a video a few months ago where I was, I was in the Lake District doing all this landscape stuff and my photos, I just wasn't happy with them. And I blamed it basically on Ektar, although I did kind of caveat that maybe I was messing things up and scanning. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that's exactly what was happening. I just yeah, I wasn't I, doing I did see job. that one. Yeah, Good. like yeah, what I, I gathered from that video is that you do, you did like the film. I didn't realize that you had so much bad luck with it before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a bit of a challenge. And um, I don't know, I guess when I scan other films with the same exact process, I wasn't seeing these issues that I was seeing with Ektar. So um, just, I, I don't know, I, I, I was ready to kind of give up, but I actually kept shooting Ektar because I was doing some more landscape stuff elsewhere. And I had a feeling it was me. It wasn't the film. It was me definitely messing it up. So. Um, I've been refining my scanning technique over the last couple months and I finally am getting really amazing results with this film and I'm super yeah. happy with what I'm seeing. So um, credit, you know, to myself for, for not giving up, but also credit to you and, and other people who, who have basically made it very clear that Ektar is a great film stock to use for a lot of reasons. Um, yeah, do you it's a polarizing it? one. It really is. And I think, yeah. I, I think um, it seems like scanning might be the problem that most people have because otherwise like it's color negative just like anything else. I don't see why it should make that big a difference. But do you shoot it a ton or, or what, what's your experience? Yeah, sort of. And you know, it's a bit limiting 
for a few reasons in that it, it is still a pro film. It still costs more than Pro Image 100 or whatever else might be a cheaper version of that. And uh, it is, yeah, being 100 speed, you can't always take it with you and have enough light. So, but when I can, I love to shoot it. I love the colors. And yeah. I think you're absolutely right that scanning can be something that puts people off because it is, it's a tricky film to scan. Everyone I've known who has worked in a lab says, yeah, Ektar can have like these issues scanning and interesting. there's interesting reasons that I think cause that, but I'm not sure. No, I mean, that, that's good. If the people working at the labs are saying it, then at least that's a bit more reassurance. But, you know, we don't, we don't shoot film photography for the ease, I would say. So mm. you kind of have to take it all as it comes. Well, yeah. what, what I'd love to do is kind of talk through some of the things you've learned while scanning, whether just for Ektar or just in general. Because um, scanning, you save a lot of money by doing this yourself, but you don't save time. There's there's definitely a lot of work and a lot yeah. of that. Um, yeah, so sure. if there's anything off the top of your mind that you think really sticks out as something anyone who scans needs to be aware of? Yeah, well, I think anyone who decides to get into scanning themselves uh, needs to refine their own workflow because you can go online and you can look up what this guy did or that girl did and, and get their information on how their process worked for them but it probably won't work for you that's the thing there's so many variables when it comes to scanning through uh, especially manual methods the more yeah. involved it is like dslr scanning and negative lab pro and all that sort of stuff you need to refine your own workflow because the video light that you use the tripod the camera the sensor the lens uh how you handle the file and lightroom there's so many things and i probably can't even remember all of them right now uh, you have to just practice, 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 get your equipment together. Uh, don't expect to get great results the first time or even the first 10 times. Just <laughs> stick with it, trial and error, find out what's working, what's not, and improve upon it. And then trust me, by the time you've done like a whole bunch of rolls, you'll get more consistent results. That, I mean, that's amazing feedback. And honestly, I, I don't think I've ever heard it like stated that way in, in any of my research, like mm -hmm. dating back to a year or two ago when I was starting to think about how to do this. So I, I wish I had known that because part of my frustration was I would copy exactly what someone was doing online. And I'm like, their photo looks great and mine doesn't. What am I yeah. doing wrong? Yeah. Um, it's funny, I, I was reading through some forums last night on, on the Negative Lab Pro website. And I, I learned some things that, that should seem super obvious, but never really hit me in that way. So for example, mm -hmm. um, Nate himself was, was mentioning to someone who was troubleshooting that dust on your negatives actually makes a really big difference and we're not talking about you know being able to just kind of heal something in photoshop or lightroom or having like a little speck here the dust literally will affect how the conversion software interprets yeah. colors and light and i was like wow that makes so much sense yeah and yeah thinking about it i i don't consider myself the the most perfectionist ever of anything so if there's a you know I'll blow on my negatives here and there and that kind of thing but these, these little minuscule specks of dust, especially if there's more than just a tiny hint, um, they probably have been affecting my scans. And okay. he he actually showed an example that someone sent him where he basically cropped the, the image differently. So he cropped the whole image first and converted and he got poor results. And then he cropped just a certain part of it that didn't have a lot of dust and did the conversion based off of that. And it looks so much better. And it was yeah. the same exact scan, you know, it just kind of cropped differently before converting. And small things like that, like I would have never thought to get creative with how I cropped. I would always just crop right to the border so that, you know, I only had the image inside. And, mm -hmm. you know, small things like this make a massive difference. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Nate is an extremely helpful guy. I was lucky enough in that he sent me the earliest version of Negative Lab Pro to try yeah. out I went back when I did that video. And if you think about it, a lot of people have so much reliance on this software now and for one dude just like you and I to just have come up with this software from scratch and build upon it and and really build it up on his own with with no company with no help it's quite amazing and as soon yeah. as I heard about the software I was like that is cool because I've tried color perfect and whatever else was around back then silver fast view scan epson scan nothing was really giving me satisfactory results yeah. and uh yeah like he's done really well and the, the thing is if you think about lab scanners, Fuji Frontier, the Naritsu software, uh, Digital Ice, all that stuff, that was refined over decades by big companies, right? Yeah. So that was built for a lab technician to be able to have as little trouble as possible. They won't run into as many you know, inconsistencies like you mentioned. 
So you have to keep that in mind when you're using home workflows. It's like we've had to rebuild this whole industry in a way because yeah. Fuji forgot about it. No one's really um, making anything else. So of course, yeah, there's so many variables and that dust thing. I didn't actually uh, know about that specifically, but it does make sense. I have had sometimes negatives I've converted and it's sort of re really whack. And then I just crop in differently, get rid of a bit more of the border or something, and it just looks really good. So there's like little yeah. variables. You have to make sure everything's sort of on point to a certain degree. Uh, yeah. And then, then you can get reliable results. And I've only recently started to get that reliable workflow. Yeah. You know, or at least yeah, know how yeah, to yeah. troubleshoot. I, I think the reliable workflow is a great way to put it. Um, when, when you kind of know what you're doing and you do it over and over again and, mm -hmm. and you're consistent, I think that's when you know yeah. that you've kind of hit that that stride. Um, yeah. there, there's all these other things I, I think about a lot that don't even have to do with negative lat pros. So for example, I find reflections on negatives is like the yes. biggest thing that I have to fight against, um, no matter what tool I use. So mm -hmm. I used to not use a, a holder. Then I started using the toilet roll, as you may have seen in one of my videos, mm -hmm. which actually I think technically is cool. the, the best solution to fight reflections. I love that, that was really good. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm using, um, just like you, I'm using the essential film holder and yeah, I love cool. it. But, yeah. you know, it, I like to scan during the day sometimes, I like to scan with the lights on, mm -hmm. and that really adds some challenges. So I'm curious, like, yeah. is there one quick hack or kind of what is your go-to way to minimize reflections? Mm. Well, I never really noticed the reflections in my scans. Maybe I, I had them, but I didn't pay attention because I always yeah. had sort of inconsistent scans until recently. And like things like that, that toilet roll method, uh, I didn't do that, but I had, I made my own sort of just a tube, you know, out of yeah. PVC tube, uh, a method I saw from Nick exposed he has a channel on YouTube. I built yeah. like a little tube rig and then eventually now I use a central film holder, but something I found out about a year ago before getting the new film holder is you need to scan or photograph the negative on the emulsion side, not the shiny side. And I was like, wait, what? That's so, so you mean the like like the, if you're looking at the text on the negative, it would be facing down, like away it would from be, the... Yeah, it would be back to front. So yeah, it's sort of like when you take the photo of the frame and you, you put them all into your Lightroom, everything will be mirrored, right? Yeah. So you need to flip horizontal, for example, parallel horizontal images. And the reason for that is that I've got a, a random little like piece of film here, but you know, the emulsion <laughs> side being the non-shiny side, yeah. uh, it's less reflective so you know you've got a shiny side and the emulsion side has the yeah. actual grain on it so you want to be able to you want to photograph the grain that's how lab scanners work as far as i know they're actually scanning from the emulsion side mirroring the image automatically because that's the side that gets exposed to light yeah it's also the side that you want to scan and it's less yeah. reflective as well it's less glossy and you get a sharper image. I've done side-by-side -side tests scanning uh, black and white, and I can see the grain is a little bit sharper when you photograph on the emulsion side. So 100%, that, that's... definitely anyone watching, you wanna um, do that. And then you just have to put up with having flipping the images later, but you just do it as a batch. Select all, flip horizontal, done. I, I think you may have just broken the internet, man. <laughs> because, well, dude, uh... I, I found out through the forums, like on um, Negative Lab Pro, uh, Facebook group really recommend it if you join the Facebook group uh, again Nate he's really helpful because he must spend a lot of time reading through people's comments and actually answering questions and really investing time and everyone else on there there's so many experts now that uh, I recognize their names when they're on the forum on Facebook <laughs> and whatever even the negative lab pro forum itself yeah and they have a wealth of knowledge so always go on there read the tips if you have a problem there's likely someone else who's had the same problem as long as the room is fairly dark I've had really good results. I just turn the blinds down. I still scan film in the daytime. I just uh, try and make sure there's no stray light coming up from the light table. So if there's light around the edges, try and mask that off. So all the yeah. light's being directed up into the aperture of whatever film holder you're using. Yeah. Because if the light's shining into the lens, that's what you want to worry about, I think. If it's shining into the lens itself, that could cause glare and other reflections. Mm -hmm. um... Well, I, those are all extremely helpful tips. I, I'm curious though, have you, what, what experience do you have with other software? Because for example, I've messed around with the Film Lab desktop version, which mm -hmm. I actually really find it to be a pleasing alternative to something yeah. like Negative Lab Pro. And not saying yeah. better or worse, but it's just the workflow is different. It's different. And I think it's different in like a positive way. So I'm curious whether that or some other software, is there anything else you've tried that you find to be compelling? 
Uh, no, I haven't actually, because I've only ever used Negative Lab Pro and it's been, yeah. I don't know how long that's been out now, but only recently these new ones have come out. And I, I saw your video on uh, the Film Filmborn app or one of the other ones. Oh, Film Desktop. Used... Oh, the film yeah, film yeah. Desktop, yeah. Yeah, it must have been that one you just mentioned. And uh, yeah, it looks good. And, and I think it's really good that there's new alternatives and competition. Yeah. I'm just happy with what I'm getting from Negative Lab Pro. Right. And I think having looked at it and I knowing how much work goes into it and the algorithms and the conversions and all that, how it integrates into Lightroom, it, it works for me. I don't really have any reason to, uh, to try anything else except maybe for experimentation, I guess, just to yeah. do a test. You mentioned though competition. I think that that's a really good point, especially yeah. in this market that kind of almost died. And then now it's starting to kind of come back to life a little bit. The more products we have in every regard, I think the better it is for the industry overall, but also, of course, the consumer, because we're the ones who ultimately get the benefit of all these different things. So absolutely I agree with you. Um, yeah. Everything, everything with film photography, especially when you do it yourself at home, is going to require some level of, of pushing buttons and, and changing things and kind of mm -hmm. working through it. That's part of the fun. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for hopping on. I really appreciate it. I think our viewers will really learn something from this chat. It was a good, like, very, very tactical, some very key specific things here. That oh, I hope so, man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's so much, you know, like stick with it and definitely read those forums. Look for tips. There's so much uh, information out there. So which one of those tips was actually the most useful for you? I know there's a lot we covered there, but let me know in the comments what you think is the number one thing we discussed that's gonna make the biggest difference for you or for anybody else. Man, that was a lot of fun talking to him. He really has so much experience and knows so much about the process end to end. And he's tried all kinds of different things, which really helps us figure out what is best for us. I can't wait to keep shooting Ektar and seeing how good of results I can get in future shoots in different situations. I definitely wanna try some sunset or maybe some sunrise to really see how it handles that low light beautiful kind of colors in the sky that you get during that time of day all right y'all if you enjoyed this video please go ahead and leave me a like as it really helps me as well and of course if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for go ahead and subscribe got a lot more really cool content coming up and you don't want to miss it till the next video y'all peace